the regular college football season is over, and I thought now would be a good time to kind of look back and judge Brian Harson's first season at Auburn. The way I want to look at this is compare his first season to all of the other SEC coaches who are currently coaching at an SEC school. I will be excluding the coaches who were recently fired. So we'll be looking at all of the current SEC coaches, looking at their first season and comparing that to Brian Harson. I do wanna put a disclaimer on this because I do feel like there's a couple of coaches who are at a uh, different advantage. I'm not sure if it's a disadvantage, I assume it would be. Um, the coaches that I believe are at a disadvantage when comparing first seasons to the other SEC coaches would be Lane Kiffin, and Eli Drinkwitz. And the reason for that is their first seasons were during 2020. And uh, the reason I feel that that's not fair to compare them to the other coaches is because during the 2020 season, what do we know? They played an all SEC schedule. So I don't feel like that's a fair uh, apples to apples comparison. So I just wanted to put that out there, but then I will compare them directly going forward. So there are two methods I wanna to use to compare, and we're strictly looking at records for this video. So we'll be looking at uh, the, their records in two different ways. First will be how many regular season wins did they get, or how many wins did they get? Some of these may include a couple of bowl games, but I tried to exclude that where I could. And then at the same time, what was their conference record, or how many conference wins did they get in their first season as as a head coach at their current school. I separated these coaches into a few different tiers, and uh, I wanna tell you who I think had the best first seasons as head coach, who were kinda in the middle, and who had the worst first seasons as head coach. Uh, so first, let's talk about who had the best seasons uh, during their first year at an SEC school, or at their current SEC school. That would be Kirby Smart, and Jimbo Fisher. So Kirby Smart, his first year was in 2016, and during that season he went eight and five, which is a pretty decent record considering that he was taking over a program that was uh, suffering from mediocrity. Uh, he did not really improve upon that too much, but that was a pretty good record for his first year at Georgia. The best record goes to Jimbo Fisher. During his first year, which was the 2018 season, he went nine and four at Texas A&M. So that is the best record for a uh, current head coach during their first season at their current school. Um, now let's flip to the bottom and see who did the worst. And that was Mark Stoops at Kentucky. His first season was 2013. And during that first season, he, they went two and 10. So they only won two games, lost 10. Um, the other three coaches I said kind of rounded out that bottom group. We had Mike Leach who went four and seven. Uh, and I said it was only two coaches, it's actually uh, three. So um, Mike Leach, Lane Kiffin, and Eli Drinkwitz all went uh, five or four wins. So Eli went five and five, Lane went five and five, and Mike Leach went four and seven. And so I do have an asterisk on that because all three of those coaches started in 2020 when it was an all SEC schedule. So take that for what it is. Would their uh, record have been better if it had not been an all SEC schedule? Probably so, and we'd be looking at a different comparison, but this is what we have. Um, above that, we have Brian Harson is six and six with the opportunity to go seven and six or six and seven, depending on how the Birmingham Bowl goes in a couple of days. Um, we have Josh Heupel, is that how you say his name? At Tennessee, his first season was this year. He went seven and five. And uh, Nick Saban, during his first year at Alabama in 2007, he actually went seven and six. So if you're wanting to compare just the first year record at a, an SEC school or at their current SEC school, Brian Harson is not that far off from some coaches who are doing pretty well. Um, Nick, Sa Nick Saban being seven and six, uh, that's not far off from Brian Harson. He could be seven and six after the 28th. Um, so it could be a comparable first season. You also have to keep in mind there were a lot of uh, close games that 
we could have won, but we didn't. We can't go with could have. We have to go with what happened. So I, I feel comfortable saying we had a comparable season to Alabama did as they did during their first season with Nick Saban. Now I want to talk about their conference records. So we looked at the overall record, but let's look at it when we break it down into just the conference. And I'll just talk about how many wins they had. Some of them you already heard because it's the same as the regular season, but let's discuss how many conference wins each of these SEC school coaches had during their first season. So we had with zero, Mark Stoops at Kentucky. With three wins, we had Mike Leach at Mississippi State during 2020 and Brian Harson at Auburn. So that to me is an area that's uh, of concern to me with uh, Coach Harson. Uh, yes, we had a couple of games that could have gone very differently. Um, three come to mind right away. We had the South Carolina game, which we should have won if we'd done our job. Um, we had the Mississippi State game where we, we blew a huge lead and let them score 40 points in a row. And then we had the Iron Bowl. Let, let's be honest, we should have won that game. We were in control for like three and a half quarters, and then we let it get away from us. So those are three games that we should have won. We'd be looking at a different story, but that's not what happened. So that record, three and five for Brian Harson in the SEC, is disappointing. And that is what he needs to improve upon for the 2022 season. After him, we have multiple coaches who had four wins. We had Lane Kiffin, Kirby Smart, Nick Saban, and Josh Heupel at Tennessee. And then with the best records for uh, conference wins, Jimbo Fisher and actually Eli Drinkwitz, uh, but keep in mind, that was during the COVID season, so he played more SEC teams. Thus, he had more opportunities to win SEC games. But that is what it is. Um, there's multiple other things we could be looking at. Um, one thing I will mention is that I, I was one of the people who was frustrated for most of the season with where we stood uh, in our recruiting class. We were, we were ranked below Vanderbilt for much of the season, and I was frustrated with that. I knew we would improve as we got closer to the early signing day, but at the same time, it was frustrating that we even were that low considering that every other school was above us. Now, now today, we're looking at a much different story. I think we're sitting somewhere around fifth in the SEC, and uh, you know we've got a top 20 class so far. So we're doing much, much better we had a great early signing period, and uh, this is really what I expect to see going forward. One of the most impressive things I saw from uh, Coach Harson is that they were able to flip an Alabama recruit to Auburn. That is a huge feat and something that I think has not happened since 2013 or 2014. So that is definitely something that uh, Brian Harson can put as a you know feather in his cap because it has not been done in a long, long time. I don't think it happened while Gus was there, or if it did, it was early on in his time at Auburn, 2013, 2014, I believe. So overall, how am I judging Brian Harson in this first year? Um, am I happy with the overall record? Not really, no, but at the same time, look at the losses we had. We had some close losses. Uh, we could have won some games, we had some major, major problems in the second quarter, or not second quarter, second half of many games towards the end of the season. So keeping that in mind, he took the necessary step to improve upon that. He got rid of Mike Bobo, um, who for whatever reason could not get our team to produce points in the second half. He's bringing in someone different, and he's going to be the one calling plays. So it's going to be on him. I respect that. So I think that's a positive move. Um, our recruiting is trending upwards. Positive move. Um, season as a whole, mediocre. But there's plenty of room to improve. The bad thing for Coach Harson, though, is going into the 2022 season, we're looking at uh, a, a tough schedule. We've got Alabama in Tuscaloosa, and we've got Georgia in Athens. 
So we have a, a tough schedule for the 2022 season. Um, we'll also have Penn State at home. So uh, there's going to be some tough teams that we'll play, but there will be plenty of opportunities for Brian Harson to improve upon this season, show that he is the right coach for the job. And if I'm going to give my one overall, just overarching thought about Coach Harson, it's that from everything I've seen, he is the right guy for the job. He is bringing a different mentality to our school than we've seen in a long time. He is showing kids that if you come to Auburn, my goal is to get you in the NFL if that's what you want. Look at what he's doing with uh, recruiting. Look at what he's doing with the draft style early recruiting, uh, early signing day. He is trying to show these guys that the NFL matters. I want to get you there. He's bringing in uh, Austin Davis. He brought in Nick Eason, both guys from the NFL. And I think recruits are going to notice that. So I do think we're trending in a positive direction. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I think we're going to go, you know, 12 and 0 next year or something like that. I, I don't believe that, but I think we're trending upwards. And so really what I want to see is where are we, where is Auburn in two years from now? Because we are in a rebuilding period. Keep in mind, Bo Nix is gone. So now we're starting over at quarterback. So <laughs> next year we're rebuilding still, but two years from now, that's what I'm most interested in. So those are my thoughts on uh, Coach Harson's first season at Auburn. Let me know what you think about him in the comments below. Thank you for watching this one, and I will see you in the next one.